right, this is Jack Donovan, author of The Way of Men, and you're listening to Start the World. Uh, my guest today is Ken Curry, a licensed marriage and family therapist. Uh, Ken is the author of Mastering Your Masculinity and several other books. Uh, you can find a lot more about what he's doing right now at solidman.com. And uh, I'll just turn that over to you, Ken. What, tell, what's, what's Solid Man and uh, what, what are you all about? Sure, sure. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate being on here, be on your your show. Um, yeah, so first, uh, let's see. Yeah, the Solid Man um, is something I've been developing over the last uh, probably 10 years. Um, like you said, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Colorado. And I've been, um, as I've uh, developed uh, my practice, uh, one of the things I've really grown in is uh, my passion for working with men helping guys get through all the crap that we deal with, you know, anger, anxiety, sex problems, you know, relationship problems for sure. And so uh, a really big part of that has been just developing my own uh, curriculum, my own take on, on what men need to really kind of gain a solid sense of self and a, and a really strong life. And so I've, I've chosen the word solid. I think that word uh, really, if I was to pick one word about where I'd want a man to be, it would be solid. And so that's why I picked that as uh, my my branding, so to speak. And uh, and so that's been um, what I've developed over the last years. Like you said, I've uh, written a few books on that. I've taken where I take my men as I go through groups. I've been developing a curriculum over over that time, turned them into books. And, and that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, let's see. I'm also... Uh, couple things about me. Um, I'm a father of three. My kids are in their early 30s now. They're adult children. And uh, I've been married 35 years. Uh, I love the outdoors. I love hunting. I love hiking. That's like my favorite thing. So that gives you a little clue about who I am, what I do. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah no, I like the I like the word solid. Uh, you know, there's that old, uh, you know, the term gravitas. Yeah, yeah. That they always apply to, it usually apply to politicians or something. Yeah, I but, think, uh, I, I think yeah. we first heard it when there was, it was one of those, uh, uh, gosh, what was it? Yeah, where they're going, does he have gravitas? And it was back probably 15 or so years ago in a presidential campaign. Yeah. Maybe Mitt Romney didn't have gravitas or something like that. Yeah, it was, I mean, they're, they always, they judge people in that way. And it's, it's correct, really. I mean, yeah. it's correct oh, yeah. to judge a, a, pol a leader in that way. And, and, and men generally, uh, yeah. this idea, because, you know, it comes from the Latin root, the same thing that we get gravity from. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's about having weight yeah. and having and yep. being, a, being a center of gravity. And, and is that man going to be solid enough in his foundation? Yeah, exactly. That he, he's not going to just be pushed yeah. with the wind. Yeah, in and his I, frame, in his self. Yeah. And I, and I also really believe it's a pretty significant uh, in comparison to the feminine. The, the feminine can be kind of expressed as fluid, yeah. the masculine being solid. So it's a, it's a pretty fair way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's definitely a, how, how do you, what are some of the ways that you help men become more solid? Oh, that's, <laughs> now we're, there's a lot to this. Well, good. But here. <laughs> well, probably I'll tell you what, probably the, uh, but here, one of my things I've loved to do over the years is make things as simple as possible. Good. And so I think as guys, we want to just give me the, give me the, the, the lowdown. And so I think probably one of the most important things in helping a guy get solid, uh, and it's the, the first thing that he was, it's uh, the foundation of my first book. Um, first book's called uh, Awakening the Internal. And so the concept is, is that most men um, are externally referenced where they live up to other people's expectations. They're living for other people's approval. They're living uh, what the culture expects. They're living to please their wife. They're living to uh, just make other people happy. And they don't really have a good solid sense of self. Um, and so the whole idea of shifting from an external frame of reference to an internal frame of reference is easily the the most powerful thing that a man can do to really get himself into a solid space, and it's it's uh as, as simple as that is just moving from externally referenced to internally referenced 
sounds really simple, but it's a pretty good uh, journey that a man needs to take. Um, and if he doesn't, you know, he'll, he'll just remain beholden to whatever everybody says. And he lose, he doesn't have much integrity. He doesn't have, he doesn't have that internal, um, this is who I am. So it's my identity, my core, my, um, my moral compass, you know, everything is inside of me as a man. And I think that internal frame of reference, uh, as a man builds that, that's where he really gains his, his solid, his solidity or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's interesting to see all these uh, different threads uh, come together. I was just, I mean, I, right before this, I taped a, a podcast with my friend Ian Strimbeck, and he was talking about essentially the same thing. Oh, is that uh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, essentially like, uh, and it's just phrased differently. And we, we were talking about not, uh, not evaluating yourself based on uh, others. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, but holding yourself to, uh, accountable to your own because we we were talking about like well, you know, because he he's pretty extreme. He's the kind of guy who gave wakes up <laughs> at four at four a.m. every morning and does a workout and then does training and then does jujitsu and, uh, yeah, and he's yeah. a really driven guy. And uh, you know, he's like a lot of people would say that that's like obsessive or not normal. And he were like, well, what's normal and why would yeah. I want to be normal? Exactly. Uh, you know, I, I want to be who I'm going to be. I'm trying to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what matters. And other people telling me what's normal is not, is not useful. No, that's external reference. Exactly. That's paying attention exactly. to what everybody else thinks I need to do. For exactly. sure. Exactly. So uh, what would you say that, uh, obviously you talk to a lot of guys about a lot of different problems. Oh, uh, everything. Yeah. Like <laughs> what, what would you say some of the most common problems that uh, men come to you with? Um, gosh, it's probably... Well, it all, it all is wrapped up in the context of relationship. So okay. that's kind of the most, so where it all happens um, is where it happens. Life happens in relationship. So usually with family, with, uh, with your marriage, um, things like that, that, that's usually the, the context in which things are, the shit is hitting the fan. And, uh, and so they'll come to me, things are going on. And usually Usually they'll come. I want to. I want to save my marriage. Uh, I want to. I want to fix something in me so that I can save my marriage. It's. It's usually now totally uh, built around, or the problem is kind of framed around the marriage. And I and I shift that immediately. You're not gonna. You can't do this to save your marriage. You got to do this to really get yourself in a much better place internally, personally. And so I think uh, if I was to pick three three different categories where guys are really struggling. Um, one is with sex or, or porn. There's a right. lot of guys that wrestle with porn mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a pretty significant thing. Um, and the guilt and shame around that is a, is a pretty big part of the, the whole journey of really helping guys get stronger. But as they gain a stronger internal reference, they really believe that they're actually a good man. They start to believe that they have a strong identity. Mm -hmm. Then they don't need that, that thing, um, cause porn is really kind of built around the whole idea of a beautiful naked woman looking at you saying, I want you. Okay. And, and that, that external validation is a really powerful thing. So if a man doesn't have a strong sense of self, he's really, really, he falls into that really easily. Mm -hmm. And so, so as he gains a stronger sense of self, pretty much porn doesn't have a job anymore. Cause I have this really strong internally referenced self and I don't need a beautiful woman to validate me anymore. And so it uh, takes care of itself. It's pretty awesome to get rid of that one. Yeah, um, a lot of men it definitely, it, that's, uh, there's definitely a, a need for a big pitfall that men fall into, I think, yeah, a lot yeah. of times is that they need a woman to tell them they're a man. Yeah, exactly. Which is a bad, bad, bad oh. road to go down because then she, then she controls your masculinity. Everything, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. that's that's terrible. And so it, that's interesting. You say that you related to porn. I haven't heard it, uh, put yeah. So before. so it is. It's really I don't feel good in here. So therefore, I need a woman to make me feel better about myself. And and that's kind of the core of what I believe porn's all about. Interesting. Um, and even even that's oftentimes the basis of a lot of marriages, a lot of relationships. Is hmm. I'm going to the woman to feel for her to make me feel better about myself. And that, that is no foundation to build a relationship on. That, that really is going to crumble quickly. Yeah. I, I, love, I love hearing married guys say that. 
Uh, cause uh, you know, like <laughs> when I, cause I'm not married. So when I tell guys that, uh, you know, I, 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 I've had, you know, so many you know, young friends and even like, you know, middle-aged men who, you know, are friends of mine. And I'm just like, you can't make her that for you. And, no, and they don't no. want to listen to me because I don't have the, I don't have the, cause I don't have a, you know, a relationship like that. So, uh, they they won't listen to me, but I love hearing it from uh, married dudes. Uh, Ryan Mickler, uh, yeah, yeah, really, he he says that a lot, and I really like that because he's like a you know Mormon with a bunch of kids, and uh, I'm like, listen to that guy, listen to that, yeah, because he he makes a lot of posts that are like, you can't make this woman the center of your world no, and rely on her for all this validation because a I mean she won't really respect you, and a, you know because she's she now owns you kind of, and and then you're. You're, it, it makes her. It makes women into a mommy a lot of times. I well, think it, a lot of dudes are like that. You know, and, they want a mommy. And, and mo women don't want to be mommy. They yeah. they don't they don't. Not to they, men. Uh, there's a there's a lot of <laughs> not to their man. To sure. kids, but not yeah, to men. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty pretty strong thing. Um, I was tr trying to think of what uh, Glover talks about. His whole thing of. Uh, uh, the woman won't respect you, obviously, but it's also she feels a hell of a lot of, of pressure. Because okay. um, the, the thing is, with, uh, with another person, um, that other person cannot hold the weight of your identity on their shoulders. You know, either way, whether it's the man for the woman or the woman for the man, it's like a, a relationship. Has, you have to have a really strong sense of self and stand on your own two feet in order to be able to have a really strong uh, relationship and so that's a that's a really big part of this whole journey for sure yeah and and uh, you know when another point that a lot of these guys also, also often make is that uh you know when men try to join oh i it came up in a discussion the other day actually on uh, ab about joint profiles on social media uh like because people have like you know joint oh, profiles. Yeah, yeah. so the, the guy really has no separate identity it's, it's he just like has it's the Bob couple. and Jane on yeah Facebook yeah or yeah and uh, and then you know it came up I think because uh, there was a, a Facebook group that was for men and different people were joining it with these joint profiles and I'm like well that's <laughs> that's not what it's about right, you know, I just right. saw a discussion about this and and you know in my comment was it's like the whole reason men are joining a group that's just for men is because they want to find a separate identity <laughs> right I mean, like, absolutely yeah oh my gosh that is not a small thing because it is it's you know the words are codependent and enmeshed and fused and all this that's that's the relationship that you're you're so i need okay so the worst line ever is you complete me right from jerry totally. mcguire that's like the worst ever totally that's like are you kidding me but that's the mythology of relationship in our culture and and you complete me. I need you to feel good about my. I need you in my life to feel good about myself. And that is just a crock. That is like it's so horrible. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, uh, yeah. I, I actually am going to write something about that at some point. Because there, there's a. <laughs> a I, I I actually had a, a young friend of mine who was he went through that, and that's what it became for him. Like it, he did. They actually started calling themselves like you know like, you know, the whole other half thing. Oh yeah, yeah, or like the, yeah other the, half. It's like, well, if you're it's your other half, then you're actually half a person. You know, exactly. Like, you, you know, exactly. You, you are not complete by yourself. Yep. No, it's that is such a powerful thing to start seeing guys start grow to be complete. It, it's the it's the line. Um, well, it's not. It's it's totally not romantic. But take it from me, a marriage and family therapist is healthy. The line is, I don't need you, but I want you. Right. That's actually the start of a healthy relationship. But it takes, you got to go through a lot of shit to be able to get to a place where you can actually say that. You got to do, do a lot of internal work. Got to have a lot of uh, relational conflict. And it takes a while to get to that space. Um, that's, that, those are the guys that show up in my office and in my groups or guys that are wrestling with this stuff. And, uh, and it's just a hell of a lot of fun to guide a guy through a space where he starts to actually stand up and become who he is, you know, as a man, not just as a man, but as him as a person and really gain that identity of who he is. Because every man's totally different. You know, oh, yeah. We, all, yeah. we all got different passions, but I think the whole passion thing is 
and this is what I maybe what I was going to say that Glover says is the whole thing is you can't make your woman your purpose. Right. You know? And, uh, and that whole, that when your woman becomes your purpose, man, your life is this small, it is tiny and, and you have to, you can't have, but that's what the major pitfall that so many guys fall into is just, I need my wife to love me. And it's because I need her to validate me. I need her to, to fill me and, and, to, to, uh, complete me. Yeah. So, there's, it be, and it makes them desperate too. And, 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 uh, in many well, cases, I think makes them pick the wrong woman, right? Oh, they, they, you know, like, oh, they're, uh, I mean, right. it, you can even say oh. it's a, with, even with guys who are just trying to get laid or whatever, it's like, it, there's a thing with, if you, if you don't need that to happen, you're going to make different choices and, and come off differently yep. than is, is if you're like, Oh God, I just need it. You know, like I, I just need yeah. to make this happen. And, and I need it. I, I need it to happen. Usually it's because I have this emptiness inside of me and I need that woman to fill it. Right. And that's, it's not just about sex. And, and so that's where it really, really falls apart big time. That's the whole concept of uh, attachment to outcome. I'm yeah. so attached to that outcome because I need it so much that I'm so attached to it that if I don't, it, that becomes my driver in life. And that's not a good place to be at all. Right. And when you, when you aren't, I mean, obviously, like I set goals. I mean, I, I'm, ta I'm oh, attached yeah. to outcomes. Huh? No doubt, no doubt. But uh, uh, in, in that kind of situation, especially a social situation like that, if you're that attached to the outcome, um, yeah, once you learn to not be that way, um, you're having a different experience. Oh, it's completely different. Yeah, yeah. The, the, word, uh, the word is indifferent. It's, yeah. uh, I'm indifferent. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Regardless of what goes on, I'm okay. Right. I got this. I'm okay. Right. And, and then what happens is you come off as very confident. Exactly. That's exactly yeah, yeah. what that is. So yeah, yeah. that's the so Jack. That's the second thing I was going to say about this whole thing is uh, anxiety. So you were asking me what guys wrestle with. So the mm -hmm. first thing uh, we we're kind of talking about relationship stuff and porn and and sex and all that good stuff. There's a lot in there. But then the whole idea of anxiety and is because uh, the anxiety is the opposite of confidence. It's like mm -hmm. anxiety is this thing that I, I don't think I can handle it. I don't think I got what it takes. Right. And so anxiety comes up because I'm worried that I'm going to I'm not going to be able to, to handle whatever situation. And so, you know, helping a guy really build his confidence, his solid sense of self helps him to reduce anxiety in his life because it's and when anxiety is high, confidence is low. And when confidence is high, anxiety is low. So if we build confidence, anxiety pretty much is uh, reduced dramatically. And I, I just love the whole idea of how men start getting more confident. And it's to what you're saying. When they enter into the relationship, their relationship completely changes because I don't need you. And whatever happens in this relationship, I'm going to be okay. If it blows up and disappears, I'm going to be okay. If it becomes something really strong that I want and I enjoy, that's awesome. And, and that, that's, that really gets a guy in a really good spot. And it all starts with that solid sense of self, um, as he really believes the two things I was talking about, I'm okay with my identity mm -hmm. and I'm, I've got it. I've got this with my capability. Um, right. yeah. Right. I mean, how, sure. how, how, what are some of the ways that you help them, uh, you know, help men build confidence? Um, I think probably the most important thing is in the category of identity. It's, it's answering the question, which is an absolute primary, one of the most important questions a man needs to ask is, uh, or answer is, who am I? And most guys have no clue. They just don't know. It's, it's, a, and it's kind of an existential question. It's a question of being. It's a question of, of my character. It's a question of the things that I'm passionate about. Um, what, what makes my heart come alive? How do I, how do I move in life? What do I do? What do I love to do? Um, and so helping a guy get to a place where he, he has a strong identity, where he knows who he is. And the, the funnest part of this, Jack, is that every guy is so different. Yeah. I mean, it, everybody's different. We all got our different stories. We got our different strengths. We got our different uh, weaknesses. Um, we have traumas, we have, you know, the things that we're passionate about. And it's like, as a guy starts to learn and discover who the hell he is, 
man, that that's where it totally changes. And it's actually, it's actually believing what I, what I'm starting to believe. I, it, yeah. What am I saying? It's uh what do they say? The, uh, he might know I'm a good man, but he doesn't believe it yet. Okay. They say the longest trip in your life is the 18 inches between your head and your heart. Okay. You know, knowing it or believing it mm -hmm. and, and the, the believing it where it starts to, where you start going, man, I am, I am a good man. I do have good, uh, skills. I have a lot of capabilities. I really want the people around me to thrive. You know, you start to really believe that you have a really good character and you're a really good person. That's one thing actually I, I really believe that's kind of a different than a lot of other therapists. Okay. Um, it's a, it's a, a lot of therapists work from a negative side of it rather than a positive. You know, they're, they're, the negative is I'm looking for what's wrong with you. Right. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'll find out what's wrong with you and we'll try to fix that rather than going, there ain't nothing wrong with you. Let's, yeah. let's rock with this. And most guys believe there's something really wrong with themselves. Something's wrong with me. Um, and, and we believe that from so many different categories. Mm -hmm. Gosh, all the different places, whether it's our family of origin or culture. Think about a culture with the word toxic masculinity. It starts off immediately. With something's wrong with you just because you're a man. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. And, and so whether it's culture, uh, church is a horrible representative of teaching guys that something's wrong with them. Yeah. And, you know, and school, school, oh, school, man, I'll tell you, I get every, every, it seems like every guy has a story from school that, that, that t teaches that they've learned something about, man, I suck. And yeah. whether it doesn't matter what it is. So there's all these different places where we learn that, that something's wrong with me or I suck or, or, or that's the whole concept of, of shame. You know, that shame is that I am a mistake type of thing something's really wrong with me and uh gosh what were we talking about that we're getting into this oh <laughs> that's what you're that's what you're asking i'm going i'm on a bonnie trail no no no, no that's so good the, uh, that, that, that's, so, that's what this is, this yeah, is all so about you're, right? You're, yeah. right your question was you know what's the core way to to move a guy into into that and then the whole idea of of, of identity is easily for me the the primary place to really help a guy gain strength in who he is. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, yeah. That's it. I mean, uh, it, it, you know, a lot of what you were saying has to do with uh, discovering who you are, mm -hmm. right? And, totally. Uh, and, totally. And discovering who you are. But also, I mean, uh, is there a level there in what you deal with as far as who you want to be? You know, because I, I think there's a, uh, you know, yeah. there's, a, there's an aspirational level of that mm -hmm. as well, because, you know, the, some guys just, I mean, they don't have a lot going for them. That doesn't mean they can't, right, they, right. Mean they don't have potential. And that's believing yourself, believing that you have the potential to be better. Yes, uh, yes, exactly. But uh, I mean, because th there's a certain level, I think, uh, uh, actually, Ed Lattimore calls it uh, uh, imposter syndrome. Yes, or something because exactly. there's the a lot poser, of poser, the poser. Yeah, well, you, yeah. You're, there's a lot of fake it to make it that you do in mm -hmm. life. You yep. know, and so you, you do feel like you're a little bit, you have a little anxiety when you're trying something new or, mm -hmm. or uh, out of your own elephant or at all. And I, and I always, I always tell people that that's normal, you know, like that you're going to, of course, you're going to feel like you don't belong there. You're not doing something or whatever. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I you think just have I, to get over it. It's yeah. It's any, anything that you start to engage in. I mean, if you're like your, your friend, the guy that you interviewed earlier, when he first started jujitsu and he, he was a rookie. Well, yeah, yeah, you're all you, you're all stupid. Yeah, at that point, you yeah, all have to yeah. start with the the beginner's yeah. mind. You have to start with the humility of going, "I don't know what the hell I'm doing." Yeah, and and when you first start out, it is kind of, "I don't know what I'm doing," but I'm gonna get through this. And you just got to start with the humility that that I'm a beginner, and and that's the whole thing of even starting with learning who you are. Yeah. and and I love I love what you're talking about because it's like we we as men don't have enough um, models mm -hmm. of really good men where you look at it, you know, we got, we've got the, you know, gosh, we got horrible models there. It's rare that you find somebody that you, you go, that's the man that I want to be, mm -hmm. or that's the man that I want to emulate. I, you know, well, a lot of times, I mean, you have to do bits and pieces, and, uh, right. And, and then some things you, you go, I like, th say it again. 
Say that again, Jack. Sorry. Uh, a lot of times you, you have to go bits and pieces. And I think that's where you oh, were yeah. actually just going with that is like, I like this about this guy and that about, about that yeah, guy. Exactly. And you emulate the bits and pieces of different, different men for different things. And, and as you get better at things, um, you maybe don't need to emulate this dude anymore, but you, need, you have another <laughs> dude that you have to emulate because you have a new challenge in life. A new challenge. It's the, uh, you know, the, the student becomes the master, whatever. It's like, and then, then who do I look to? But primarily, Jack, I want you to hear the major thing that I'm saying mm -hmm. is that everything that, that comes to you from your internal process mm -hmm. is enough, right? Okay. If, if my internal says this is the kind of man that I want to be, follow mm -hmm. it, guide it. It's, yeah. it's going to guide you well. It's gonna, and that ultimately, even thinking about what aspect of this man or this man is going to be, it's, it's only because that resonates with my internal process. That right. resonates with my heart, that I like that, and I want to be like that. But I don't necessarily like that, and I don't want to be like that. You know, you, you, know, you were mentioning Ed, Ed Lattimore. Yeah. yeah. It's like, man, I, I talked to him last fall, and it's like, there are so many things about Ed that I'm like, I like this guy, mm -hmm. you know? He just got, he's just got that, there's a, there's a, a posture or a presence about him. And, and so just using him as an example, man, it's like, there's something about him I like, and I want to be more like that. You know, he's just freaking cool as a cucumber. And, and he just got, the, he's got that confidence. And so he's a great example for one of those things. But yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about is, but it's got to resonate from my internal process that this is who I am and this is what I want. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, uh, an old friend of mine used to say, uh, you know, when you, when you have a bunch of strong friends around you, uh, that all have different qualities that are, uh -huh. that you admire in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you do a little bit of channeling almost. <laughs> I mean, like, 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 okay, I need to be more like, this exactly. guy yeah. for in this situation. Well, and he's going to, he's going to kick your ass in that kind of situation to do the right thing as well. Right. It is, it's kind of the same. What you're talking about is what do they say? You're the, you're the equivalent of the five closest people in your life or something like that. I yeah. don't know if you've ever heard that. that I guess I'm a did, dog. Uh, but, <laughs> but i'll tell you what if people were more like dogs man the world would be a great place that's true dogs are pretty great but uh yeah, that's absolutely. fun that's so you were saying you you had uh you had a uh, you know people come to you about uh you know porn and uh Anxiety. it's amazing to me that that's such a that porn is such a big Dude, man, it, for, it know, is people. gigantic. I know for, for guys that don't necessarily wrestle with it, it, it is kind of curious because it hasn't become your drug of choice, but, it, but it, when, it, but everybody kind of has a drug of choice, something that kind of helps them to cope or, sure. or try to get through life or to navigate those negative internal feelings to escape or numb those out. Right. I mean, we all have them. Even like, uh, I mean, we have socially acceptable ones like, like, uh, exercise or workahol or, Right. Uh, that type of thing. And then you, the socially unacceptable would be, you know, these things that look like perversions or whatever. Right. Um, but a guy who doesn't get caught in it doesn't necessarily understand it as much, right. but guys that are in it, man, it is, it's a really, really tough thing. And well, most, mostly because it makes you feel like shit. It makes you feel a lot of shame. It's um, and it, and it, and it, you can't get rid of it. I mean, any addiction type of thing that you can't stop doing Right. It's really tough. Yeah, no, that's that, that, that I could see that. That's definitely that. I mean, do you think that a lot of it is, is the moral concern? You know uh, what, Jack, I don't think any, well, okay, hang on. Yes. I mean, for them, I mean, what, yeah. what the shame comes from, not uh, necessarily like, you know. No, I actually, I don't think, um, my first in gut thinking was uh, right then was no. Okay. You know, I, initially, I don't think it has to do with morality. I mean, man, I, I will have guys that are really strong in their faith and they wrestle with this. Yeah. Um, or guys with no faith at all and they wrestle with this. Okay. Because it, 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 like I said, it really comes back to more of your identity or more of what a, the shame thing, you know, that mm -hmm. I believe that I'm a piece of shit or a effing idiot or something like that. Right. You know, that I have this internal dialogue. The inner critic is just always barking at me, telling okay. me that something's wrong with me. And if you don't wrestle with that necessarily, 
like I said, you don't quite uh, understand, but um, it's just, I, I'm just saying it's a hell of a lot of fun to watch a guy really grow internally and really right. shift that external internal oh, and totally. where, he, where it starts falling away. It's just really cool. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Yeah, so we, you said porn and anxiety. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go no. Ahead. I was going to ask, I don't know if I answered the question about what you were just saying about porn. Well, I mean, no, I was just, I was concerned. I, I thought maybe some of the shame thing because it might become the morality as well. Oh, okay. As that, thinking that's it's bad, but also I was actually kind of interested as to what, what are some of the, cause obviously if someone's has enough of a problem with it, that they're coming to another guy to be like, Hey, I, I can't oh, I need help with this. I, what are some of the downsides that they're experiencing? That's what okay. I think my question is that. Yeah. 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 So one of the major parts of it is the whole thing. And this might be part of your, your, your thinking about morality or whatever, that it's mm -hmm. bad. Right. Um, a really, really powerful part of it is the shame of the, of uh, isolation okay. or hiding, right. um, hi hiding it or I, I have to hide this thing. This thing is, is so bad and I'm so bad, this part of my life that I have to hide it and okay. nobody can know about it. So this is a great question you're asking because how the heck would a guy, how, why would a guy come to me? Right. Because he's wrestling with this because he's hiding it. Well, usually, yeah. usually some, rarely, probably about 10% of the guys come voluntarily, you know, where they're going, you know what? Wisdom says I need to get this shit fixed. Here I am. Help me with this. Right. Uh -huh. And that doesn't happen often enough. I wish it did, but usually guys come to me, you know, uh, my secret life has been exposed. Um, okay. now, now my family knows about it or, uh, maybe, uh, my workplace, I got caught, you know, looking at porn at work or, uh, something like that mm -hmm. where I get busted. Okay. And, and now that would be embarrassing. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah that could right? be a problem i could see that right. being a problem. Yeah. and so now that it's exposed but the thing is it's it's embarrassing at first but most guys that deal with this they usually go that was the best thing that ever happened to me and i was just waiting for the moment that i could actually now i could take now i can actually get help or now i can actually talk to somebody and so so then they'd come to a guy like me or there there's a number of people out there that, that work on this stuff um, um, yeah, I'm sorry. My head was going somewhere else right there because it's, but the, the category of, uh, um, where that's why a guy would finally come to talk to some, it. So Jack, most of my work is mm -hmm. done out of desperation. Okay. Most, most men will enter into, into, uh, any kind of counseling or coaching setting, counseling more, um, out of desperation, my marriage is falling apart. I lost my job. I'm, I'm struggling with something that I can't fix. You know, um, this stuff's taken over. It's desperation, and yeah. and that's not a bad thing. I'm I I totally respect desperation. You know, because we all have really tough moments in our life. It just takes a hell of a lot of courage to be in a really difficult moment and then move into that space with someone else. Yeah, because um, that's really. It's, it's a very vulnerable thing. Mm -hmm. And this kind of goes back to that. We were kind of chatting about vulnerability a yeah. little bit, but the, the idea of vulnerability is, is uh, um, it's courage, courage and vulnerability are like this, yeah. and, you know, anytime you put yourself in a, in a position where it takes courage, you're open to something. And that's, yeah. that's the word for me. That's the word that describes vulnerability right. is openness. I'm now open I'm not closed. I'm open to, to potential harm. Yeah. And, I'm, and, and here now you can see all of what's going on. I'm open to it. And so that's a really, really powerful thing. Um, Cause I don't believe vulnerability is strength, nor no, do no, I, no. Yeah. nor do I believe that vulnerability is weakness. Right. It's not weakness. It's not strength. It's just openness. It's well, I mean, it, my thing with that is, is that uh, it's, like linguistically, it actually means weakness. Uh, <laughs> right, I'll give so, you that. And so, like it, but I mean, what you're really talking about is like, like you said, openness to risk. There it is. And, that's and, that's and what any, it is. Any courage, anything that requires courage, it requires openness to risk. Yes, yes. I mean, because you can't. I mean, you know, if I'm going to jump across a thing, that I might not make it. it it's, or or the or the guys in the wingsuits that jump off the cliffs. Yeah, in Switzerland or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah, open. and they can have that. 
but uh, <laughs> no thank no, you. No, but it's a hell of a lot of fun to watch on video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, any, anything that you want to do. I mean, obviously, I mean, I was uh, talking yesterday. I mean, obviously, uh, okay, I'm a writer. And, and you, I mean, we're both, we both have been to the 21 convention and yeah, so forth. Yeah. I mean, it's like, um, I don't know that I could get a real job anymore. Uh, I mean, I may be unemployable, you know, like uh, just because of things that I've said and things that I've done in my life. And that's risk, you know, and that's, that's maybe yeah, vulnerable it is, it in is. certain ways, but that's just what you do. And it takes a certain courage. And that's why a lot of people don't do what I do. Yeah, or, or what you that's do. A, or what, that's why a lot of people aren't out there saying things that could get them in trouble or, or put them in a situation of criticism. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and that's, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, we're making ourselves vulnerable. Uh, so it's, okay. it's not cool to be vulnerable. It's just, it, it's no. just necessary. It's a part of a process. It's a part of life is yeah. the, the risk. And yeah. that, that's one of the things in my masculinity uh, where I, where I, where, excuse me, where I frame a uh, big part of masculinity is is the paradox, is I call it the risk paradox, mm -hmm. where there's high risk and low risk on right. both sides of the paradox. And that's where a man lives in the tension between those two things. Mm -hmm. You know, the high risk is what we're talking about with the vulnerability, the courage side of things. Yeah. Courage is absolutely a masculine virtue. There ain't nothing about it. Yes. You can't, you, nobody can argue that one. Yep. But courage puts you, puts your, you're putting yourself in a position of high risk. And I, I think that's vulnerability, especially yep. as we're talking about a, a guy finally coming into counseling, opening himself up to somebody like me, being able to say, Hey, I got this problem. I need some help. That takes a hell of a lot of courage. Yep. On the other side of the paradox is the word I, the word I use is fortitude. Mm -hmm. It's the side of strength, right? Right. And I, and I like the word fortitude because it's like, at, at the same time, as a man, I have fortitude. I'm like a freaking fort, you know, whether it's, it's uh, you know, you think of the old frontier forts with the, the pine uh, logs with the pointed tips or yeah, yeah. think of a fort, you know, a, a castle with the, you know, the turrets on top and, the, and it's just made out of stone and there's no way you're going to get through. Mm -hmm. It's not open. It is right. closed and it is powerful. And everybody that's inside that fort is right. safe. I mean, that's what a man wants to do with his family. It's sure. like, I am strong as hell. My family is safe. That's a really powerful part of this. Mm -hmm. But at the same, same time, we live in the, in the whole world of risk. So there's this paradox going on, and we live in the tension between those two things. And that's where our masculinity is played out. Absolutely. A, a hell of a lot uh, of fun. Absolutely. Right there, no, right? I'm, not, I'm working on a new book right now, and that's definitely, uh, you know, that whole idea of that perimeter is that fort. That, you know, uh -huh. I, I wrote about the perimeter in the way of men. That's the fort. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But, uh, but all of masculinity takes place at the edge of that. Uh -huh. all, all, all initiation is actually kind of in the outside zone of that. that, that and and that all, place. yeah, because that's where danger is. And it's, yeah, men, yeah. it's the job of men to deal with danger. Uh-huh. And, and so all of it, yeah, comes out outside the perimeter of safety. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a very clean concept. I like it. <laughs> it is, yeah. but it's, it's, I think really misunderstood. Oh yeah. You know, the whole idea and hardly anybody really knows when it comes down to it. I mean, even as we're talking about it, we're doing a concept. It's a clean concept. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. but then when it really comes down to how the hell do I live that out? Oh, you it know? is so much easier to write about stuff than it is to, 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 to do it. <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's that's. I mean, that's a that's a whole different thing. There's a lot of. Uh, I mean, it, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, dang, man. Nietzsche I mean, has like, this great quote: "Is like it's like uh, just because, uh, uh, you know, it, would you not accept if I had the keys to your uh, chains?" Would you not accept them because I cannot find the keys to my own? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's because, you know, we're Dude. all different, you know, like, and, uh, you know, like everybody has different challenges, but, you know, guys like you and, and me to some extent who are talking about other problems that other men have, just we, we can see their problems. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm perfect. Oh, like, they're not, very... you know, like, but oh, uh, there it's, Trust me, it means that I'm not perfect. <laughs> right. I think that's, that's part of moving, moving through this stuff. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's a concept. I'm on a journey. You're on a journey. We're all on a journey to become the best version of ourselves, so to speak. 
Yes. And, and it's like, uh, but we're all learning. What the heck is this? And then this is what I really like about what we said earlier, the whole idea of when you see masculinity, you know what it is. Yes. You know, and, it, and it's like, and that's where you go, I like that and I want that, you know, and, and being able to, I think that's, that's the best thing is really putting yourself in. Um, and this is what, this is that isolation thing. Gosh, most guys are so freaking isolated. They don't have good male friends. They yeah. don't, they don't spend time with their, with men. They're, they're not out there doing stuff that's uh, fairly manly. It doesn't matter whether it's hunting or fishing or, or building something or, 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 or playing a sport. I don't care what it is. Just get your ass out there and, and spend time with men. I mean, yeah. we have to, we have to. Yeah, it's so essential uh, to, and because we don't have that in the mo modern world, uh, you know, men had their own separate separate world, and then the home life mm -hmm. was the time with women. But the like most of their lives was out dealing with men. Yeah, pretty and much. Uh, we don't really have that anymore. A lot of yeah. guys they don't have any segregated environment where they have to just deal with men and the opinions and, and the judgments of other men and then the go negotiation and conflict and all the things that need all to happen. that yeah. yeah i mean that's it's it's so important for your growth and i think that's why the men's spaces of any kind are so important and really threatened they're really threatened yeah I mean, can you even name a real man space out there yeah i mean uh, i think the Masons are still all men. Really? I, I didn't think, know that. I believe so. They have the Eastern Star, which is the female version, but the Masons are still all men. Interesting. I, th I think uh, uh, that. So that's that's one thing. Uh, but and obviously, you know, they're you know, they're, you know motorcycle clubs and, and things yeah. like that. You know, but uh, uh, things are more open to maybe guys who aren't int interested in those other the, hmm. either of those two things. Yeah. Uh, are harder and harder to find because yeah you yeah. have to have i mean i live in a small town that uh you walk down the main street and all the buildings were built by men's fraternal organizations oh yeah There's yeah the mason's it, building and the elks building and the moose and lodge the, and the fraternal the order of my, odd fellows yeah the i i o o f yeah yeah right? yeah it has that little thing on the top right yeah, the, the international order of yeah, odd yeah. fellows yeah it's and so it, funny i know exactly what you're talking about yeah those are like most of the big buildings downtown in this small little town yep. where I live and they built America, you know, like they, they built a lot of these men's yeah. organizations really uh, built America. And then they were infiltrated really uh, in the seventies and eighties. And so mm -hmm. by women who men can't have their own space because they have secret privileges in there. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and then Trust so yeah. they, they fell apart, you know, and, yeah. and so men don't really have anywhere to go uh, to just, uh, interact with other men and so you have to yeah. create that space and that's that's, right. that's a real challenge but if you don't do that you're actually robbing yourself of something you're robbing yourself of yeah it's not it goes back to the whole thing the pitfall is isolation mm -hmm. and and i think everything we're talking about you're robbing yourself from guys that can model something for you guys that can challenge you guys that can walk through a really uh, horrible time in your life with you mm -hmm. um uh yeah the 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 term i use um one of the uh, i live in colorado i used to i was actually born and raised in cascadia where you're at oh yeah that's so, right you know exactly yeah. where i'm talking about I know you know about the downs i know exactly <laughs> where you're at yeah yeah, yeah 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 i grew up just 20 yeah. miles downstream yeah on the yeah. washington side white yeah. salmon yeah totally yeah so that's where i grew up but the um gosh what was i gonna say I had a point and then we got into Cascadia. We got into the Cascadia, oh, but yeah. I'm in Colorado. So one of the one one of the guys that used to be the Rockies baseball the baseball team, the Rockies, the manager, Clint Hurdle, I think he's with the Pirates now. Um, but he uh he had an uh what he called every man needs their Mount Rushmore. Okay. And and it's four at least four guys that are solid and you see their face. And if and if you come if you ask a guy who's in your Mount Rushmore, he'd be able to name them off. Because these are the guys that are hang out with. These are the guys in my life who are my strength. These are the guys that I have fun with. These are the guys that know my stuff and and hold me accountable. Right. You know, every every man needs their Mount Rushmore, their personal Mount Mount Rushmore. I just love that illustration. It's a great way to put it. It is. I, I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah. 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 It's a great way to put it because that's what we need. I mean, we we don't we're 
Yeah, we're just too damn isolated. We are. Absolutely. I mean, there's so, especially uh, men with uh, with families, uh, it becomes a. Uh, it, it's really hard to make uh, adult male friends. Yeah. And uh, it's then I think when you have families and other obligations, I mean, to make the time to hang out with yeah. them is yeah. actually because, like I said, you used to hang out with men at work. Yeah, that was what you did. You hung or, out, or at, or at the pub, or at the yeah. you know, or wherever the you smoked a cigar and talked about politics or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and there used to be all these spaces for that, and now you know, it you actually have to actively pursue male oh. friendships and and yeah. like make sure that there's time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you talked about uh, you know, young married guys, young families. It's uh, because so often it is um. Gosh, what, how to, it's just the, the whole idea of you have to, the wife saying you have to be here, you have to be here. And, and that's a, um, and so guys really get caught, you know, and, and so you, you'll hear so many young guys, their friend will get married and they never see him again, or, or they, you know, it's a rare occasion, occasion that they would be able to spend time with them. And it's like, man, it is hell or high water, these young guys. They have got they have got to fight, scratch, and claw for those times to yeah. maintain those male relationships even after they have kids. It is so important. It is one of the most important things to do. And you don't have to go overboard, but just spending enough time where I'm keeping the connection, I'm having fun, I'm doing some really good things. So it's a, it's a really important. Yeah, and I think a lot of them actually struggle with the idea of they have to convince their spouse that that's okay. Yeah. You know, and that's, a, that's a tricky because a, a lot of women don't under, <laughs> a lot of women don't understand why, don't. why, I mean, evolutionary speaking, their, 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 their job is to secure your resources and, and all of your attention. And, and so right. you know, the idea that why am I not everything to you? You know, like I think uh, a lot of, or they, a lot or of they, women have that. Or they, know? yeah. <laughs> That, you know, that is the female equivalent of what I was talking about. You complete me, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like, I need you. I need your attention. I need you to complete me. But a, a lot of it also is, is women don't respect uh, the time that men spend together. Yeah. Like if women to get together, man, they are, they are talking. Oh, yeah. They, they are talking. And so, um, gosh, here, here in Denver, uh, about a mile and, or a mile, an hour and a half away, is uh, gold medal uh, fishing waters on the South Platte River in right. a little little place called Deckers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a, about an hour and a half away. And so let's say two buddies get together and they go, let's go fishing in, at Deckers, you know, and they, they drive the hour and a half down there, spend a few hours fishing. You know, they're probably 100, 200 yards away from each other. They, um, and, they, and then they drive an hour and a half back. And when the, when the, when the husband comes in the house, the wife says, how was your time? And he goes, it was great. What does the wife say? What's her question? It's what did you talk about? Oh, okay. All right. right? That's yeah, what yeah, she yeah. thinks. What did you talk about? And what does yeah. the guy say? Uh, we talked about the hatch, what flies we need to use. That's it. Right. And then, so the woman's sitting there going, how on earth is that a great time? Yeah. If you didn't talk. And they yeah. didn't talk the whole way. They probably didn't say 10 words between them. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what midge are you using or, or what caddis fly or whatever, whatever, you know, that's it. But it was a quality time. It was a good thing to be together because to men actually hanging out and doing that shoulder to shoulder time is actually very, very important. And, and if, if there was something that needed to be said, you know, they would probably say it, you know, but that's how you build that, that trust that's how you build the camaraderie by doing things together and then there will be a day like let's say one of the guy's dads passes away and they have that trust built that they can actually talk about what it feels like to lose your dad or what was he like for you or something like that you know and you can actually enter into that little more vulnerable spot with those guys it's just really important yeah you know and i think that it's it's uh undervalued especially because you know we Way even in this society we're, we're uh, uh you know women control a lot of the dialogue mm -hmm. about uh, about how people are supposed to interact yeah and uh men have an entirely different way of, of interacting totally. and uh and it's 
it's almost become a secret cult of stoicism because <laughs> it, it, that's, it's become very popular to talk about recently. But I mean, men have always been, I think, more inclined to that in terms of, you know, because men have had to deal with danger and so forth. And so your, your mm -hmm. emotional control is a huge part Absolutely. of what you have to do. Yep. And, and also, you know, to, to recognize and assess threats and like, I, I don't trust you yet. I don't need to tell you everything about me. Yet. Exactly. You know, and uh, I think that uh, it's becoming more popular, I think, to, to approach things in a more stoic way and uh, to have the emotional control of that. But that, that's part of the men's process is that, you know, that's how they get to trust you. Uh-huh. It and is. Because they're not, they're not just going to, like, women are very much in the, in the space of, like, well, we've met five minutes ago, so I'm going to tell you about all my problems. Oh, they'll go for it. Yeah, yeah. And men is like, well, I don't know you, so why would I tell you that? No, I, I, have, to, I have to spend a lot of time with you before I can actually, I know that you are you're going to be somebody that I'm going to be able to spend, are open. And it goes back to that openness. And yeah. it's only rare. It's rare. Our vulnerability is freaking rare. Yeah. And with few, few people, I mean, if, if you're vulnerable with more than five people in your life, man, you're, you're not, you're not spending your, that currency very well. You're a fool. Too much. Know, but yeah, yeah, but exactly. you do put too but, much out there. Yeah. yeah. Way too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're, you're spending your emotional currency way too. You're just willy nilly tossing it out all over the place. It's like, nah, men. I, You're I just a whore said, of feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you got. You're gonna write on that one. <laughs> you just, you just coined a phrase. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good. No, it's, it's. I, I just said uh, five people. It's like you know, your wife, cup, your kids, and a couple good friends. You know, yeah. those are the only people that I'm really gonna be vulnerable with. Right. And and it's like, and that's it. And, and you do need that. You do need those people to be able to, to give that to, because men, men are equally as uh, emotional as women. Sure. Uh, we're, we're just do it totally differently. And the, the, the stoicism you're talking about, I think that the reason why it's captured some things is because it doesn't disrespect your emotionality or whatever the hell's flowing deep within you. Right. It's just being able to understand what it is, pay attention to it but I don't have to express it. And I, and I think that that's a really significant thing that, that men need to feel. You yeah. And they, but you I, ha think... I have to know, I have, I have to know what's going on inside of me. That's that internal frame of reference. Right. And I have to process it, what I'm feeling, but I don't have to express it, especially express it like a woman. And this goes back to that whole thing you said of what's seen as valuable or not. Right. You know, the conversation that men, men have wouldn't, the wife, come, the guy comes back to the wife and she doesn't respect that you guys didn't have a good time because you didn't talk and it couldn't be further from the truth. And women might not respect a man because he doesn't use a lot of words with explaining what he's feeling. Yeah. Because we, we are, it's the, um, the word laconic. Do you know that word? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah laconic. I, yeah. What's that? Yeah, Almost exactly. Problems. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, mm -hmm. I use the least amount of words as possible to get my point across. That's how men do emotion, but we need to do emotion. We need oh, yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. People get confused about the difference between emotional control and uh, not having emotions. Exactly. You know, and, and it's, it, there's been some confusing messages. I know like uh, my mm. best friend, Jesse is, is very, uh, uh, yeah, he's he's a John Wayne fan, and and that's like the most demonized <laughs> the most demonized figure of feminism. Uh, but uh, I mean, he you know he jokes about like feelings. I kill all those, you know, uh, you know, like kind of. But uh, I've killed them all. Uh, I don't have none of them. But uh, at the same time, he totally does. And like when actually we sit down and talk about stuff, the you know, you know, like uh, we we have great conversation. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, we we just went on a. Uh, a bear hunting trip in which we knew that we were not going to find any bears, but that was the <laughs> only thing we had a license for. So, uh, just we, an we, excuse to get out. Well, we, we were supposed to go deer hunting, but we bought the wrong licenses for the wrong time and uh, at the wrong uh, place. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we, the only thing that was still valid was bear licenses. Right. And so right. we're like, well, I guess we're going looking for bears. We have no idea how to bear hunt or you know, what, whatever, but we already have the weekend booked. So uh -huh. we're going to go do something. Yeah, so, yeah. But, you know, so we just end up driving around 
look, you know, spotting, looking through scopes and stuff, trying to find bears uh, where they're supposed to be bears at. And, uh, but you know, what we're really doing is, is, is uh, talking. Exactly. Uh, you know, we're talking about, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, sure. We're talking about where to find the bears and, and, uh, the fact that my brakes almost went off on this logging <laughs> road going downhill, you know, and so you have little adventures, but, uh, you know, we also talked about all kinds of other stuff that we care about. And, yeah. uh, you know, and that's, uh, but that's like, as you said, men like to do that stuff shoulder to shoulder and in the midst of, uh, working on something or a project, uh -huh. they kind of needed an excuse to do it. Like, uh, you know, Absolutely. like instead of like, let's just sit down and talk about our feelings. Uh, you know, men don't really do that. Uh, no, you know, and then you, and you and your you and your friend bear hunting. You probably you you probably spent you know less than one percent of your time talking about something that might have been somewhat emotional. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But you did. But you spent that. But that's all it needed to be said because you didn't need to say a lot. And but it but it connected you guys and it made you trust each other a hell of a lot more. Just that that little experience that you had. You oh know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's what we do. And, but men need it. I think that's all our point that we're saying is men need other men. Oh no, to... absolutely. Absolutely. And it's become a really weird thing to say that. I think there was a, there was an interesting impact that's, you know, was unintended and not really the fault of this group, but it was, yeah, I think the um, openness of homosexuality in America uh -huh. changed yeah. a lot of dialogues. Mm -hmm. In the sense of, um, I mean, a lot of there are a lot of women out there who actually, if you need male time, they'll like kind of make funny references about that. They'll, they'll like, they'll like, they'll kind of make innuendos. Oh yeah, totally. And, and which is is kind of a meant to control your time more. And uh, right, right, right. And uh, it's kind of seen like they like men need more time with other men. Sounds weird now, you know. Like mm -hmm. uh, it sounds weird to certain people. That, that that's, it's be... unfortunate. It is. It's not, way unfortunate. It's really unfortunate and, and sad, and it really robs men because there are a lot of men who are afraid to be. Uh, you know, they want to make sure they're not being seen in that way. Yeah, you know, like I, I grow up out with a group of men. Really, what do you guys do? You know, yeah, like right. that. You know, and, and that's not productive. Uh, and, no, uh, it's not. It, it's just kind of we live in this weirdly really weird gossipy society, especially because of the evilness of Twitter. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, no doubt. Every, everything is so gossipy now. And, yeah. and, uh, and I think people have get the wrong opinion, uh, too quick and, and men are very, again, they, they protect themselves from that mm -hmm. as well. You know, you want to, you want to be seen in a particular way that you're not. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that's a little bit of a struggle. So you said you had uh, three p things that do come to you with it. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, we've, we've kind of been talking about the last one. The last one is oh, okay. ang anger. Okay. And, or how do we do our emotion? So, you know, a lot of guys have a, yeah. So, um, as we know, I mean, angry, anger is, is a, an acceptable emotional response for a, for a man. Sure. It's so funny. One of the, one of the guys in, in my group one time, he, he says, I have two emotions, angry and not angry. <laughs> one, one. It's Damn, like the, the it, 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 there's the great quote from uh, uh, one of the Avengers movies where they, you know, like the like uh, they ask the Hulk how he taps into his anger and it's like my secret is that I'm always angry, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so anger is the other one, but it really it's mm -hmm. not about anger. It's about how do I actually navigate my emotional process in a healthy fashion. You know, how do I do this well? Because underneath our anger, anger is just an indicator. It's just saying something's going on deep. And usually I might be angry, but down inside I feel belittled or I feel uh, disrespected or I feel alone or uh, it's some other really deep emotion that's going on. And so when men are able to actually, this goes back to the internal frame of reference. If I'm actually listening to my emotions, listening to what's going on deeply, and then being responsible to actually talk about that. Like if, if I'm angry, but yet it's disrespect, and I'm not talking about disrespect for those people around me that are disrespecting me. Right. And I'm not being responsible for my, my emotion, for one, for, or for my sense of well-being. And right. that's a really powerful part of it. I need to have a conversation with people around me about disrespect, not about my anger. Right. And, that, and, and that's a really powerful thing when a guy starts to, to think and consider what's deeper 
what's going on and under the surface. I might be afraid of something. I might feel vulnerable, you know, whatever it is. Um, I might just need a hug, you know, yeah. and, and I, I need to ask for a hug and that's all. And when I ask to get the hug, my anger disappears or, uh, or I actually feel really good about my life right now or whatever. I'm going to sell this podcast as the power of hugs. Um, but no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm totally no, fucking kidding. No, I would never do that. Uh, dude, <laughs> dude, check this out. So as you were talking, you were going into the whole thing of what our culture thinks, you know, about, yeah. about, and, and I was going, the worst thing in the world that I've ever heard is the, 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 the cuddle puddle. Have you ever heard oh, of that? Oh God, that's, that's terrible. No, I've <laughs> never heard that for guy, guys to get together and they just, they just, they cuddle and I'm going, all right. That's over the over Wait, the. Wait, is is that a thing? It's a thing. Oh yeah, this oh, is not yeah. what I, this is not what we're talking about. Too far, too far, too far. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I've heard of I've heard of actors doing that, but I've never heard you know, like yeah, it, we just need a, to feel, you know. It's but a, it's it's a thing. But it's it. Wow. The, but you know what it is. Even though as 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 uh, where I think it's uh, gosh, what do what do what do I want to call it? I, I just think it's not healthy. Um, but the problem is, is that men are not getting what they need from just a regular hug from a guy. Just give me a hug, you know, yeah. and two guys, you know, giving each other a good bear hug. I mean, that's a powerful thing. I mean, yeah. they're not, they're not getting that in their life. So they need something that's a little more extreme. And so, and that's what, this is what I'm talking about. Just being able to pay attention to what the hell's inside of me right. and asking people around me to provide those things for me. You know, yeah. I, I want to feel more respected. So would you, uh, you know, treat me with respect and not criticize me or I'd like a hug or whatever, you know? Yeah. And so being able to use, use your voice in a really strong way, it's the funnest part of that one um, is the whole thing of, it's really fun when guys start listening to this deeply and talk mm -hmm. about that with the people around them man, they, they stop being an angry guy. It's really a cool thing. Interesting. This, this actually happened to me. I, gosh, when my wife and I were, gosh, I think we were six or seven years in married and we did, uh, we did counseling. Our, our counselor talked to me about how I had this lava, this volcano in, inside of me of anger that was just ready to explode at any moment. Mm -hmm. Right. And he, he was spot on. It was yeah. just under the surface because I was not caring for myself. I wasn't talking about what's going on. I was right. an angry, angry guy. And, and it's like, and there's a point in time in my life where I'm going, man, I'm not angry anymore. This is great because I'm actually being responsible for my emotions and actually talking about what those needs are that are attached to those emotions. This is a pretty powerful thing for me. And I love, I love coaching guys through that as well just get into a good spot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you, do you deal a lot with, uh, because this is what I've encountered with, with a lot of men and, and myself certainly included is, uh, anger at the outside world, uh, is a lot of what, I mean, obviously, you know, we've been both the 21 mm. convention, yeah, yeah, been, yeah. Then, you, you get, uh, and that, that's really not a space for that. People just think it is, but, uh, there is a lot of anger at what's going on in the world and things that are changing that are um, out of your control. And, yeah. and people deal with this. Actually, this is a big problem with society generally uh, in that, I mean, there's so many people who are like addicted to CNN or addicted to like all this, uh, all these things, these sources of input of things that they actually have no control over whatsoever. Yeah. And I think it, you had, you had talked, angry. Yeah. yeah. And you had talked about it on uh, one of your, uh, blog posts, Gus, last year or sometime, the whole outrage culture thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The whole thing of just being outraged at everything. And it's like, you, you can't. You just can't. Um, yeah. But gosh, I'm not, I think I just, I didn't answer your question with that. That was where my head was going. No, that's okay. Um, what's the main, what's the main qu question you're well, just, asking? Well, just, I mean, do you, yeah. Do you encounter at all uh, oh, guys who yes. have a lot of anger yeah. from the outside okay. world? Because that's a little yeah. different than like anger about what's going on in your personal life. Uh, is, a lot, I know a lot of guys who just are really obsessively angry and they want to talk. I mean, they, then they, what they want to do when they get together with other men is actually talk about the thing that they're not allowed to talk about. 
-hmm. you know, you know, like as far as whether it's, uh, you know, stuff that's going on with the world in terms of like, uh, you know, the way men are treated mm -hmm. and the way men are talked about, um, you know, whether it's, you know, like, you know, just a lot of the hot button issues in society yeah. that are, that are taboo. And I mean, a lot of men, obviously the world isn't a great place to be a man right now in, in, mm -hmm. in terms of, in perspective. Of history. I mean, it, there's a lot of yeah, anti-masculine forces in the world. And I think a lot of men feel that, but they can't really talk about it. I mean, they have HR people and they have like, uh, they, they can't talk about things in, in, that are real no, in their real life. Can't. And and so they, they just bottle it up and they're really angry about the external world. And we're, I think we are all a little vulnerable to that. Um, yeah, yeah. I've no, tried think... to stay, that's my emotional control is like, like I've finally gotten to a place where I don't, <laughs> I don't like, you know, don't be mad at what's going on. Don't be mad at the internet. Maybe, but that's also why I can't be on like something like Twitter or something. There's just, <laughs> there's just too much input of of anger and craziness and like it, just stupidity. I, is, and I, I actually found I had someone. It was funny. <laughs> I had someone uh, recently. A, a couple times it's happened recently because I've managed to isolate myself in a good way in, in my life that I don't have to deal with things that I just consider in, in incredibly stupid. Like I, like I don't have to deal with like extreme liberals or like whatever, like, you uh -huh. know, which I hate that word for them because they, they were anti-freedom, but uh, I, I don't have to deal with a lot of the things that a lot of regular guys have to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, like they, they've have to be in the discussion with like their sister-in-law who is like, you know, uh, exactly. or whatever. And, yeah. uh, and I don't have to deal with that. And when, when someone says something to it, I, I, I've snapped a couple of times because I'm like, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I did it on a podcast actually i was a guest and like some guy asked me like he asked me like what, what about, about female masculinity i'm like what <laughs> you know, yeah. like, i just i just like I, I went on a tirade and i haven't done that in years you know like yeah. but i'm it's because i don't have to deal with that very often but a lot of those guys i i realize that a lot of guys are in a situation where they have to hold their tongue a lot yeah you know, oh yeah like, yeah I think you need to get out more, Jack. That's probably. all there is. <laughs> probably, probably. But I mean, I don't want to deal with like, no. I don't want to deal no, with. No, why would, yeah, why so. would you? I, yeah, I think, but, but most guys have to, because they have to go oh, to family totally dinners. Do. And, 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 and I think, with, yeah. Yeah, I think probably the biggest place of anger or uh, it's, it's with injustice, because what you're talking about, how the culture kind of, kind of, it's not a friendly place for men. Right. And that's probably the most important place uh, that really causes a lot of pain and that anger you're talking about is the injustice of the family courts. Yes. Um, oh, some of the most ridiculous things, um, come out of there oh, and yeah. it's like, and rare, rare is it that, that a man comes out and goes, Hey, I was actually treated with respect. I was right. actually given the benefit of the doubt or right. something like that. So I think a lot of guys in our culture now, especially guys that go through that system, mm -hmm. whether it's a DV, domestic violence thing, or or a divorce thing, um, it's like a lot of guys um, they get screwed, and 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 it's a really tough place uh, for guys. And it's, I think that's probably the place where there's most resentment, anger. Um, yeah, where and and so you know, helping a guy navigate that and to move on from being um, treated horribly in, right. in court. That's a, that's a really, again, it's just a tough place, but getting, a, getting his heart back where, again, that's an external that has done that. And, and a lot of guys will take that as evidence that, you know, and they'll take it on in heaping mounds on themselves, right. that this, this is them saying who we are or, or, and, and so there's a heck of a lot of resentment that kind of flows out of that. And that's a tough, that is a tough journey for a lot of guys, you know, yeah, that's, that's probably the biggest place. Okay. And then, then of course there's like the whole idea of red pill rage, you right. know, have you heard that, you know, where yeah, yeah. I'm now I'm becoming a lot, I start to see it and I'm just pissed off for a while yeah, on the yeah. fact that this is the way life is and and all yeah, that. yeah. Once you see, I mean, you've seen the things that you can't unsee now. Yeah, exactly. And that, now you're, and now you're angry about it. And then you, and then there, there's a syndrome that kind of goes with that, where then you become the truth guy. And then, you know, <laughs> like we're, we're like, I have to tell everybody I, about the truth. Everybody, now. you know, and uh, right. and and you know, like, 
I, I, the problem with the truth guys really is like, well, you can pick one, but you can't be, you, can, you can't do all the truths or you're yeah, just right. like fighting all that you're fighting in all directions. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, it's, yeah, that, that's definitely a phase. You go through the being the truth guy. I, I think a lot of guys go through that. And then some of them will never stop doing that. And, and some they, of them don't. They're, they're, they're just ruled by anger. And they're, uh, yeah, that's right. And that's the problem. I mean, and that's kind of where I've gotten and what I think is men really need at this point. Um, you know, they need that kind of emotional control. And okay, the world isn't, the world may have always sucked. We don't really know. Oh, only, think about it. Obviously. Yeah. yeah obviously. Yeah. You and I didn't have to do World War One, World War Two, or sure. the Depression. That was our great our grandfather, great grandfathers. Yeah. You know, and then uh I mean it's like the world freaking world right now is freaking amazing. It's so abundant. Yeah. You know. Like I said, I, I grew up uh twenty miles from me. I remember in the grocery stores did had empty shelves. Yeah. You know. Wow. And it's like it, it's like yeah, you go into the store and there wasn't bread or there wasn't fruit or every fruit was in season. Whatever's in season is what you had. Okay. Yeah, you know, now yeah. we have freaking everything all the time. Yeah. You know, it's insane. All the, yeah. everything that we have. And they finally and like, got sushi in the Dallas. <laughs> 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 they finally got grocery store sushi. I was so excited. Well, <laughs> like, well spookies, spookies. Is it still there? Yeah, 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 it is. Spookies I've never actually is, been. It's because it's pizza, and I don't eat a lot of pizza. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that that's the little league hangout, man. I'll tell you. Okay. That's where it was the big deal after the season. We go to Spookies, oh, and wow. of course, that's that's where the Rajneeshis poisoned people too. Oh, oh, really? It was in, in, at their at Spookies salad bar. Oh, really? I thought it was. Oh, it, I, was it called something else at that point? Did he rename it? Or no, I don't think so. Oh, really? No. Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay. No, this is the yeah. There's a couple other places too. But, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. But no, the whole thing is sushi and the dolls. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, so they I had guess... they, they had a restaurant, but they 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 they, they, they you know I, I was so used to from, from being in bigger cities like grocery yeah. store sushi, you know, like. Oh, Right. Uh, I, I mean, because it's it's a clean food. It's it's actual food. It's not a protein uh -huh. bar. You know, like it's something that I used to eat all the time, and I was so excited. Uh -huh. They they remodeled the the, the Fred Meyer. Okay, the, so all that to say is we live in this time. Yes, it, it ain't the depression. Right. It it is so there is so much goodness going on. Yeah. Life is so freaking amazing. Yeah. You know, we get a in 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 a you can fly anywhere you want. You yeah. know, it's it's crazy. How, how much goodness there is in the world yeah. and gosh what am i saying why am i saying that well just because we're talking about dealing with anger and yeah, it, right like the, the, the world has always kind of sucked it has but it's yeah. a really good place of course there are things that are unjust yeah. always something has had there's been a level of injustice Absolutely. but that's what a man's job is how do i navigate injustice or how do i uh, how do i change if i think it's unjust then what am i going to do to make a difference that's there's there's something that I can engage in in battle. That's a fight that I can start to to fight, you know. Yeah. And mo instead of rolling over and just being pissed the whole time, I'm gonna do what I can to make a difference here. Yeah. You know, that's what a man does. Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, that that is a good <laughs> bookmark. Uh, that uh, that is a good a good stop for the 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 episode. Uh, yeah. So I think we're gonna. Do you have anything? Uh, this will probably come out in a few weeks. Uh, Okay. What do you have anything that you want to uh, tell people about? Is a link they want to send them to, or um, anything like that? Are you going to have a couple links on this for me? Yeah, I'll definitely um, have the. I'll uh, tell you what. Every pretty much everything anybody needs is solidman.com. Good. That's kind of uh, it'll show everything that I got. Probably my my biggest thing that I want to accomplish this year uh -huh. is uh, do something uh, similar to what Hunter does with his fraternity of excellence. Right. I'm calling it the Solid Brotherhood. Okay. It's, uh, I want to create an online community. Yeah. Um, or, I've already got a good start with it, but I don't necessarily have the platform built yet. So, but that's this year. This that's the one thing I want to really do well this year, Jack. Is is uh, create the uh, uh, online community, and it's kind of sort of what we were talking about: how men need other men, and yeah. and if, it, if it's going to be an online thing with an occasional meetup, then then so be it. You know, if that's if that's what we need, but. But using the resources that we have with technology, um, that's something that I really want to get going. So 
for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, everybody, I always joke, everybody talks uh, trash about social media and the internet, but at this point, I, almost everyone I know is, I know from the social media or the right. internet. So it's, uh, that's how people reach out. You know, it's good, obviously, if they can get into the real world eventually. Uh, oh, totally. But, uh, you know, like, uh, it, it's, that's where you make first contact a lot of times. Yeah. And so yep. that's, that's a good thing. Well, good luck with that. I may do something like that eventually myself. But uh, so uh, Solid Man is the uh, the website. Yep. And, uh, and you're starting a, a solid brotherhood for people who are uh, into your vibe, and your yep. work and whatever. So, Absolutely. Cool. All right, yeah. Man. And that sounds awesome, Jack. It was great to talk with you. And I uh, yeah. hope we can do this again someday. And and I hope to see you around like you did at the 21 convention last fall. That was a great time. Awesome, man. Cool. Thanks Love for being on. All right. Thank you. Thank you for watching or listening to Start the World. You know, my personal mission is to help men become the best versions of themselves and to, to face some of the challenges that uh, we all face in the, in the 21st century. You know, it's, it's getting weird out there. Uh, so I'm having conversations with other men who are helping men face and overcome these challenges. And that's why I'm so excited about the new season of Start the World. Uh, you know, I have a lot of people scheduled. I'm going to talk to psychologists, therapists, martial artists, coaches, trainers, artists, spiritual leaders, and maybe just some, some fun weirdos. Uh, we're going to try to, to, to put out the, an episode every week for a while, maybe 30 to 50 episodes this year. Uh, you know, I'm going to get some lavalier mics, maybe do some... Uh, some in-person uh, interviews and uh, maybe even some workout content. Uh, I think a lot of people would actually like that. Uh, you know, if you want to support this podcast or just my work generally, I am, uh, I'm writing a book this year that I'm also pretty excited about. Hope, hopefully it'll come out in the fall. Uh, I'm using Subscribestar. Uh, Subscribestar is an anti-censorship platform. Uh, you can sign up using a link in the show notes or on YouTube or just by typing in subscribestar.com slash Jack Donovan, and it should take you there. So thanks again for watching or listening to Start the World. This is Jack Donovan. Stay sober.